Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So, streaming a little bit at a different time, but it's okay. <laughs> I have a lot to talk about. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about inflation and how that's still an issue and how Bitcoin just slaps inflation. <laughs> also, some market news. Of course, some crypto news about Do Kwan and DeFi Kingdoms and about several other projects. So let's get started. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified. Now, this week, of course, is different because I'm on vacation, but normally I have set times. Um, and also follow me on social media and check out all the latest news, articles, and guides at CryptoZeros.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Uh, I know that some of you guys may be disappointed that Bitcoin didn't pump up more today. Well, like I've been saying for the past few days, you know, Bitcoin has come up quite a lot within a short amount of time. It does need to take a breather sometime. It does need to consolidate sometimes. But overall, you can see that it's going sideways. Yes, of course, we're a little bit higher, 48 but after the first Bitcoin pump, we were right around here, about 47. And overall, we've been sideways for about two days. So it's not it's not like we've been here for, for uh, weeks or months. No, it's just been a couple of days. And I like to remind you guys before, it's kind of the same thing. Every few days, we take a breather. And every few days, we go back up because guess who's buying? Doe. Doe is buying. <laughs> But right now, Bitcoin is down a little bit from the last few days. But you know it's not down today? I was looking at it. Guess what? Look at VeChain. VeChain is up 13% today, breaking the mold because most projects are a little bit in the green today. But VeChain is coming up, and I do have something to share about that. So overall, VeChain is doing well. But let's talk about what's going on today overall if you look at u.s market it's in a red more in the red so than than green uh <laughs> near dow is about even but you can see nasdaq almost down a percentage so the stock market is still iffy got up and down up and down right it just not not really no momentum going on because of course there's fears about a lot of stuff about the war and inflation, right? And, you know, let's not forget, just a week ago, it seemed like this was so long ago, but no, just a week ago, Fed Chair Powell said inflation is much too high, okay? Didn't say just too high. He had to add in there, much too high. So ever since he said this, the market's been just kind of iffy because no one wants to hear that. Right. So people think that he's going to be he's going to be very, 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 very aggressive with his rate hikes. I obviously the first one was really nothing. Twenty five basis point. But what about the next one and the next one after that? People think that he has to go crazy with the hikes. Right. But many are are thinking, well, you can't you can't do that because it could cause the U.S. economy to go in recession. You can't just go super crazy with rate hikes without repercussions. Sure. You can curb inflation, but you could also kill economic growth, and that is even worse. You don't want the economy to go into recession. You don't want to go into deflation mode, right? And you know what? Look, take a look at this. One in five workers run out of money before payday. That's not a good thing. Even though Powell says the workforce, the labor force is strong, there are many that are still struggling right now. Right. And it's not a good situation. And because of the rate hikes, we're starting to see effects. For example, the housing market starting to cool off mortgage refinances or at least the demand for mortgage refinance have plunged 60 percent. OK. And just new home sales and existing home sales, they've been coming lower, too, than expected. So the just that very first rate hike right and the mortgage companies raising their rates too is starting to have effect this is why so many people think that you can't just go all out with crazy inflation i mean crazy rate hikes to curb inflation because it's going to have repercussions that could be even worse and spending of course 
not just mortgages, spending, retail sales come up short in February as well. So we're starting to see effect, and in April, we'll go get retail sales for March, and it's probably going to be even lower, right? So this is what's happening right now. Of course, this is why the U.S. market is not doing good. Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, not doing good. But crypto has been. Bitcoin has been. Bitcoin has been rallying since its low, its recent low of 30 something thousand and now we're closing in at 50,000 right so despite all this going on this is why i'm saying bitcoin is slapping the face of i don't know inflation or the usd at this point um so I, i'm sure you guys have seen memes like this before but honestly it the, this this could be, even though this is a meme this is a joke but honestly it's true since since 1998 till now, the 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 value of a twenty dollar bill has been decreasing so much. There's really not much you could buy, right? Twenty dollars back in the day, you know, when I was growing up, yeah, you could literally buy whatever you wanted. Gas was like a dollar something, right, per gallon, and you know, over time, you just don't notice it, but everything has been shrinking. Things have gotten more expensive, and uh, the the quantity of what you're getting has been shrinking, right? But for Bitcoin, it's the opposite. It's been growing and growing and growing and growing, quite not to the point of three Lambos in 2021. But if we keep holding that three Lambos per Bitcoin could be a reality in the next five to ten years. That's the honest truth. And... If you're just saving your dollars for three Lambos, you better save a lot, okay? Because over the next five to 10 years, inflation is going to be even worse. The amount of buying power or the buying power of your money will decrease substantially. But if you're holding on Bitcoin, no, it's only going to increase. This is why Bitcoin is the ultimate hedge against inflation. Nothing has outperformed it. And I've shown this before, sats. How many sats can you buy with a dollar over the last 10 years? It has decreased 99.9%. Your buying power decreased 99.9%. Nine years, 10 years, five years, right? With the exception of the last year, because this is Obviously, if you go back one year, Bitcoin was at 64000 a year ago. So that's the only exception right now. But if you go beyond that, two years, 86%. 86%, just two years ago. I know you guys remember 2020 like it was yesterday. I do too. You could have bought 86% more Bitcoin two years ago versus now. So think about that. Think about how much you lost out by sitting on the sidelines and holding cash and not investing in Bitcoin. All right. Now, what else is going on today? Well, just a few other things. I don't know. There's some interesting things I saw. Uh, Robinhood shot up yesterday because they're extending trading hours now. They will allow the people that shouldn't be <laughs> trading after hours and pre hours they're going to allow them to do so. So now Robinhood will allow you to trade from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., right? Very similar to crypto. In fact, they're talking about how they could just make it so that you could trade stocks 24-7. I don't even know how that would work because even a pre-market and, uh, and aftermarket, they have their – limits too so I don't, I don't know what's going on with robin hood they're really really desperate rather than do stuff like this they should be expanding their crypto offering what happened to the robin hood wallet what happened to adding sheep what happened to just growing that right that i think would help them a lot more to try to do this this is going to cause more wreckage the aftermarket and pre-market volatility is is very very vast I have seen, I have played this before. I've seen this game before. In pre-market, you buy something, oh, when bell rings, man, you're down like 20%. Um, and it, it can happen, right? So, again, I don't think this is a good thing. I think Robinhood just needs to concentrate more on, on crypto. 
I mean, just look at all the crypto exchanges, how much money they're making. And Robinhood, you know, they they should they should tap into that. So I don't I don't know. Um, I did see this too. I don't I don't know how someone could get away with this. Um, a former Yale administrator stole forty million dollars pretending to buy computer equipment for a university. So I'm pretty sure. The faculty and and the students have been complaining about slow computers. <laughs> and this one administrator, Jamie Patrone, uh, been basically taking all the funds. And what did she do? She bought luxury cars and several houses. This is this started since uh, I don't know, 2013. I mean that's that's just I don't know how you, you think you could get away with that, right? Forty million in losses. So now she has she has agreed to forfeit five hundred thousand dollars in her accounts, two hundred thirty five thousand dollar Mercedes, ninety thousand dollar Range Rover, two Cadillac Escalades, a Dodge Charger, and three property she owns in Connecticut and Georgia. I don't know what term she's gonna get, but I mean you know, crime doesn't pay. If you get away with something, <laughs> eventually it's going to catch up to you. And we see this all the time, right? Like these people that have been doing it for years and they think they could just do it forever. Eventually you'll get caught. I I don't know. I just, this has nothing to do with crypto, but I just thought, I just thought it's interesting. Um, okay, Opera Browser, not very popular these days, but Opera Browser is integrating Bitcoin, Solana, Polygon, and other five blockchains because they want to become like the go-to browser slash dApp store uh, for all dApps, right? So this is pretty, pretty positive, although I don't know how many people actually use Opera these days. Like, for example, Brave is also doing that. Brave said that they partnered up with Solana, to make it so that their dApps would appear on Brave Browser, but that still has not happened yet. So there's a lot of talks about integrating. Right now, the dApps, they live on the wallets, right? Like Coinbase Wallet, Trust Wallet, whatever wallet, mobile wallets. They have a lot of Binance Wallet. They have dApp stores um, so that you can run all the dApps, but they're not cross-chain. They're usually like limited to one chain. But Opera's trying to do that with all of them, which is, of course, very positive. Um, what else is going on? Terra, of course, buys another 139 million Bitcoin, reaches 31,000. He said, Do Kwan said, you know what? Besides Shitoshi, I'm going to own more Bitcoin than anyone else. That includes Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy who owns seven billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. But those like, nah, seven million, seven billion is not enough. We're gonna own ten plus a billion. Right? And of course, there's just so many people that's paying attention to this, like Pomp, nonstop talking about <laughs> Doe and Terra and how they are buying three X the daily income supply. And I've said this before. Think about it. There's only 900 Bitcoins being produced a day. And most of the miners that are producing the 900 million are not selling any of them. They are keeping them, right? So basically all the new Bitcoins coming out is spoken for. There's no more new ones. And then you take the likes of like PayPal and then even Robinhood and all these other financial apps that's also allowing people to buy Bitcoin. They have to replenish their stock. Okay. They're they they're not like Coinbase. They didn't they didn't accumulate Bitcoin when it was at like one dollar or below, right? So they have to buy it. So you you look at what's going on right now, and there's just really not that many. Everyone's fighting for what exists now. All the future ones, and there's only going to be there's only eighty eight percent of the supply left. That's all spoken for. You'll never see any of that. That is going straight into Doe's wallet or Michael Saylor's wallet or the miner's wallet. You're not going to see that. Everyone is fighting for what exists now, which is why it's important to recognize reserves, Bitcoin reserves on the exchanges going down in a drastic manner and liquid supply going up in a drastic manner. That's exactly what's happening. 
because all the new Bitcoin is spoken for. Everyone's fighting for what exists right now. So important to recognize that. And the earlier you recognize that, the more you'll feel like you don't have enough Bitcoin in your wallet. All right, what else is there? DeFi Kingdoms, of course, is opening up their very hyped up Crystal Vol expansion. And they have released um, a Medium post about how to take advantage of liquidity pools. I have not checked it out. I, I don't think I'll be able to on my laptop here. But supposedly rumors are you could get a thousand APR. APR on the new uh, Jewel slash X Jewel pairing. So if you're take, able to take advantage of it, you should. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty darn good right now. Um, I talked about VeChain. They're up pretty significantly today, double digits, and they've been making some moves recently. And I think this is it. There, there's a new, uh, there's a new game maker that's about to create a new MMORPG called Metaton that is going to be on top of VeChain. So VeChain is starting, like I said, getting involved with more consumer-based apps. You know, they were traditionally B2B and that has served them well. But now the trend is you got to go with B2C, right? You got to go with consumers, DeFi. You got to get staking involved. You got to get metaverses. I got, got NFTs and games, right? And that's exactly what they're trying to do and go full out with consumer-based stuff. And it's good. It's starting to have effect. All right. Um, last few things. Uh, Sky Mavis, which is... The company behind Axie and Ronin, they have made a pledge. They will give back the $625 million that was stolen, right? That is a lot. Someone yesterday said this may be the largest hack we have ever seen, and that could be true. I don't remember if there's any one that is bigger than this. But anyways, it's good to see that they have enough in the bank. They should. I mean, they're a multi-billion dollar company, so they should have enough bank to be able to cover this. Hopefully, they don't have to sell off Axie to be able to recover this. Um, but yeah, it's an unfortunate situation. Again, you got to be careful with your own funds. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. The only other thing, you know, in terms of what's been going on with the slap, in case you guys care, but Jada Pinkett Smith released this on her Instagram saying, this is a season for healing and I'm here for it. And no one knows what this means exactly. Um, and people are thinking this does re relate to the slap, but no one knows what <laughs> this means. Does she mean she's healing or Will is healing or Chris's cheek is healing? No one knows. No one knows. All right. Outside of those things, that's pretty much it. Um, Bitcoin is still holding about 47,000. Like I said, today, red day. Hey, you know what? Solana. Solana pumping up, right? Uh, Solana up 5% today, back to 120. Nice. Solana is one project I've been telling you guys about to stock up because a couple days ago, I looked at the 90, 90 day percent and they were still down like 40%. I'm like, man, that, that looks like they're, they're still oversold and undervalued. So good to see Solana up a little bit. I mentioned about VeChain up a little bit. Who else is up? Uh, Waves is still doing well. Um, Waves is a Russian project that was started by Ukrainian. So I think that's the reason why they've been going up because there's either Russians or Ukrainians are buying it. But they're kind of outdated chains, so I've never really got into them much. Um, Ave doing pretty well today. Oh, you got Zillica shooting off 52%. I missed that completely. I didn't see that. But they have been doing very well because they're uh, Metropolis or Metropolis. I forgot if it's, there's an R in there. But a lot of hype over that metaverse. Supposedly using the Unreal Engine and it's going to be looking fantastic and how it's going to blow away all these other metaverses. But I stress caution when something has gone up that much within a single week. Be careful. Be careful. That's a huge, huge gain. Uh, Chili's up a little bit. I don't know what's going on with this one. So I'm just going to skip over that. 
And that's pretty much it. All right, let's do some quick Q&A, and then I'll let you guys go and get back to my vacation. Corey, the other day you said that was moving out of the East. Do you mean they're expanding or moving out of China? They're not in China. They're in Singapore. They're moving their headquarters to Europe. So that's what I mean. And they're doing that because they want to focus more on the West. Uh, here we go. Are you go paintball? I'm not familiar with that project, so I'm sorry. Young, um, saying Jewel, yes, I already just talked about DeFi Kingdoms. You were just a little bit too early. Can you look at anchor places down big and haven't seen recovery yet? Well, you're talking about the staking anchor, right? So, um, I I never been I never been big into this anchor. I've been big into the other anchor, but not this anchor. I mean, they have they started recovering from their lows, right? But you know, they're more about just staking. They're a cloud computing. Play, basically that helps you create nodes for other projects so that you can stake so if you don't you don't want to go through technical difficulties of creating your own node uh, they will help you do it very easily but you got to pay them so basically it's like a cloud computing play but they also offer a few little nuances like liquid staking which uh, is pretty cool for like say Ethereum. Also, they do some like micro staking kind of thing where they combine your stake with others and they stake it together, stuff like that. But primarily, they're staking play. It's just you know, it's something that I, I I just I'm not very interested in. I think if you have enough, if you spend some time, you could come out with your own nodes and not pay them, and and that's even better. Is Do is Doge Elon Mars the next sheep? No, it's not. You think Miles G and Matt Wallace will go to jail? I don't know. I saw something about it, about Matt Wallace. I I didn't get a chance to read it. I don't know if you know this whole thing is getting out of hand. Supposedly before he was coming out with another coin x doge or something like that and doge foundation was going to sue him for it i don't know if something else developed but yeah i don't hopefully nothing bad why do you think soul is pumping well soul just soul has been oversold i've been saying that and they could be pumping for a number of reasons because they're oversold or because their nfts their nft volume is second next to ethereum and there are a lot of things coming for Solana. For example, Coinbase is going to um, Coinbase Wallet is going to support Solana. OpenSea is going to support Solana. Um, so there's a lot of things going on for them still. Your views on XT.com. I have no idea what XT is. I don't know anything about GMT skyrocketing, so can't help you. Can you do a video on some of my favorite low cap coins? You know what? There's not that many because most of them that I like turn into mid or big caps. But there's, there's a few. But I think it's still important to remember that even though the market is recovering, we're not completely out of the woodwork. We're not completely full-blown all coin season. So a lot of small caps, they're not going to recover nearly as quick as the mid or bid caps, right? So I think it's still more advantageous to concentrate on Bitcoin and big caps and some mid caps rather than go in hard on small caps because a lot of them will stay that way for a quite a long time until we're like full-blown like – you know, all coin season, which we're not there yet.
I do not have <laughs> I do not have my XRP video to show you guys. You have to wait. You have to wait until later this week. What are your thoughts on Litecoin? Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, the, the interesting fact about Litecoin is they are still lower than when when Charlie Lee dumped his bag. He dumped around 200. So think about that. It's been five years since he dumped towards the top, and Litecoin still has not recovered. So just think about that for a second. Um, I don't like BitTorrent. I don't like anything with with Tron. Let's refresh. Let's see. Yeah, Bitcoin is still holding strong above 47. Uh, Solana still continue upwards. Terra is still strong. Terra formed another high yesterday at 109. Can they climb back up and keep going? Certainly they can. It's a tight race right now. Look at Solana and Cardano. Only, well, according to this, Cardano is still higher. But anyways, it's a tight race between uh, XRP, which looks like they will be flipped over. In fact, XRP may drop to number nine in the near future. So, Solana, Cardano, and Terra are very close, neck and neck and neck, and all three will probably flip above XRP in in about a week or so, if not sooner. So then, and I think Avalanche, which also has been doing well, you can see they're coming close to 100. They're going to start going up too. So if this if this trend keeps going, we can see XRP getting pushed to number 10. And maybe even out of the number 10, out of top 10 in the future. Uh, what do you think about crypto gaming? I think it's I think it's gonna be big. Right now, I hear gamers do not like crypto, do not like NFT. I think they will come around to it. It's just silly to think. Uh it's silly to think that that is not the new evolution of gaming. To entice people to play and actually be able to earn real money while they're playing, I mean that is that's fantastic. Think about the gaming gaming industry right now. I mean, at least the mobile apps and a lot of you know desktop gaming like Fortnite. They're all free, right? They're free. They let you play for free, but they entice you to buy upgrades and buy battle packs or buy whatever. But that is being reversed. Pretty soon, games will be free to play. And whatever you earn in the game, you'll be able to sell for money. That's even more enticing, right? That is the future. But unfortunately, there's a lot of pushback right now on that. Yeah, tonight, I'll talk more about... I know Zillica's, like, on fire right now. So I'm going to talk more about Zillica tonight. But you can see things are starting to flip in the green. Avalanche has talked about Terra is about to form a new high, starting to come up. Solana is still moving. Cardano is lagging today, unfortunately. But, you know, things are starting to turn in green. Things are starting to look good, right? And I kind of expected this. I said, you know, Bitcoin is going to stall, right? Short term is probably going to stall because it needs to consolidate a little bit. But usually when that happens, a lot of money starts flowing to all coins. It always happens, and then it starts up again, right? Um, and if you look at Bitcoin dominance, it has fallen 41.9%. So it's starting to come down. All right, guys, I'll let you go. Overall, looking pretty good so far. Can we see more of these altcoins pump in the future? We definitely could, and we will. We will. So smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys tonight, hopefully around the same time, uh, 8 30 or 8.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, all right? Take care, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.